This is McCook's Mr. Bill. It's an honor to have you here. Never hurts to start your day with about 30 minutes of just going to a local sand pit, fishing just a little bit, getting out with the dog. Be that as it may, you're here for a story. Okay. Well, the story goes like this. I was over at the park and just the other day, and a family came up and they uh, bought some snow cones and then they introduced me to one of their relatives that had left the state. Said that uh, he was a farmer and he left the state, sold out and left. <clears throat> and so after all of the uh, business was done, I asked him to stick around for a second. I said, I got a question or two if you don't mind. He didn't, he didn't mind. And I said, okay, you were a farmer. I said, how big? And he said, well, I had 600 acres. Now, 640 acres is a section of ground. That's one square mile, even though it doesn't have to be square. But uh, a mile of land here in Nebraska, eastern part of the state. And he said he was uh, within about 30 miles of Omaha. That's a monster city, to say the least, for the state of Nebraska. And he said his land taxes just kept skyrocketing. And he said it ended up that he said he was paying in land taxes $50,000. $50,000 for his land before he made a penny, or if he made any money, or even if he lost money, he still owed that $50,000 to the state of Nebraska. Most of that money goes to the school system. And he said it's pretty hard pill to swallow he said superintendent down there got almost three hundred thousand dollars a year had three secretaries that did most of the work for him he said it's very frustrating and he said how many businesses start out fifty thousand dollars in the hole and he said then of course if you make money here comes the state again for income tax and the feds they want their piece and he said it's just beyond frustrating plus the state of nebraska is always trying to get their G-men to make sure that a farmer doesn't do anything wrong and if they do they could be fined thousands, tens of thousands or more, maybe even take the land. He said I didn't feel welcome and I, he said I just felt like I was working for the government. I was their slave. So what he did, he said he sold out. And he said he went over to Missouri. I said Missouri. Over there, he bought 800 acres. He got an extra 200 acres of ground, better ground. I said better, bottom ground, and he was tabletop here. And he said, without question, a lot better ground. And he said for about the same money he sold out for, and he said that 800 acres in Missouri only cost $15,000. 15000 that's saving him $35,000 a year just to go down there and farm and have a bigger farm. And if you think he's just the only one, you'd be mistaken. About the only ones that are holding out are the mega farms. And I've had a number of them tell me that as soon as they get up to 20,000, 30,000 acres in that bracket and, and more, uh, that the feds kick in and they start giving them subsidies that almost offset any taxes that they have to pay. The idea, you would think without question, is that the state of Nebraska is doing everything it can to drive the small farmer out of Nebraska, drive him out of business so the mega farms can take over even more. But the small farmer, he's up against it. And that guy said, I think I found a better way and he said they really enjoy it down there in Missouri. It's sad that we lose such good people, such good people. You guys have a good day.